I'm Joanne Harris reporting for Bass TV. We're coming to you today from the University of Florida's Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center in Davie, Florida. I'm Joanne Harris and I'm here with Rodney Irwin from Alligator Associates in Homestead, Florida. And he's got a little friend on his shoulder that sadly is another invasive species beyond the python. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, these are a result of a breeder that released them. Now what is this guy right here? What's his name? Uh, number three. Number three. I don't name. But, but what, what type of lizard is he? Oh, he's a veiled chameleon. He is a true chameleon. These, these colors will change. If I set him down on you know, my truck, of, uh, the hood of my truck, it's red. He'll change to red. This little guy is really gorgeous. He really is. Very well tempered. And they say as soon as you put him in a different environment, he'll change colors. A uh, python will eat an animal and may not eat for a month, two months at a time. Tegu lizards. Their delicacy is eggs, any kind of eggs. As with the pythons, the native animals here did not evolve with these predators in their ecosystem. The python, typically the first encounter with a native animal is the last. Uh, they don't have time to start building that natural fear that you know, will evolve over millions of years. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll be hopefully talking to you again soon. Very good, my pleasure. Nice meeting you. I'm Joanne Harris and I'm here with two of the snake hunters that are going to go out into the wild and see what they can find. Please introduce yourselves. How you doing? They call me Balpeen. And I'm Puck. Now what's your MO for catching a snake? Have you ever caught one before? No, uh, I've never caught one in the wild before. And you? Either. I've only caught uh, deer and hogs before. Now, what do you think you're going to do? How are you going to go about finding them? Well, you know, we're going to start researching the area here, do a little bit of stalking, finding where these animals are going to be. Um, we're not local to this area. I mean, we've lived here in Florida most of our lives, but, uh, you know, it's a different part of Florida, so we'll see what we can find down here. And Puck, what are you using to humanely kill them? What's your What's your idea? Well, we have two, two plans of uh, attack, depending on how we deal with them. It's, uh, we have machetes that we're going to use to decapitate them if we have to, or uh, most likely we're going to be using a 22 rifle. Right? Now, I understand from the research that I did that a head of a python can actually bite you up to an hour after it's separated from its body. Yeah. That's scary. That's why if we if we do dispatch his head with a machete, we will also place a place around through its through its brain so that it, it you know gets rid of all that nervous action in its brain, so it, it will no longer be living that it won't be able to hide you. Thank you for joining us on Bass TV, and we wish you all the best in the hunt. And at Lisa Wood, I'm with Miami Dade Fire Rescue's Venom One Unit. We maintain the largest antivenom bank in the country and we also work with the invasive species uh, gathering data and capturing the ones that we can. I hear a lot of different numbers on how many snakes are out there and, uh, as far as the Burmese python. Is, is there really just no way to measure them? I don't think there's any way of figuring out how many are out there. Um, and it can fluctuate, you know. The more that we find on the outskirts of the territory, in other words, they're dispersing outwards, I think that we can say there's probably more in the main territory. The more little ones we find on the outskirts means that they're breeding more on the outskirts, so they're, they're dispersing and they're spreading out. And that would indicate that the population is growing. Thank you so much for your time. I'm Commissioner Alligator Ron Bergeron. Uh, commissioner with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission of Florida. Well, I think when it comes to the python, it uh, gets very large and it actually comes up the top of the food chain. The python challenge gives the public 
an opportunity for the environmentalists, the conservationists, the hunters to be a part of saving our environment. Because the food chain in the Florida Everglades is extremely important. Is there anything at all that will go after a full-grown snake like this? Well, in my professional opinion, when an alligator is eight feet long, he becomes top of the food chain. But other than that, alligator less than eight feet, uh, in my opinion, the snake would win. An alligator larger than eight feet to 12 feet, I'd probably put my money on the alligator. But you got to understand that these snakes, when they lay eggs, they lay hundreds. So they can multiply very, very quickly. So he, uh, could, he could easily crush you or I? Um, given the opportunity. Maybe you. I don't know what you can trust me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for well, talking with welcome. us. you're welcome. Thank you for and being I a part. And I won't shake your hand because then you'll be laying go of the snake. I know. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing public awareness. <laughs>